so the first area that I really want to want to get into is the child abuse situation itself. So so just follow my logic as we're discussing this. Um, so so let's start when you were a young boy, and a typical day in your not in your household, but but a typical day how you would end up at at Bambata's house. Like was it you know school like it was, would it be like summertime or would you go to school and then you end up over there so let's talk about a typical day in your household and how you know through at some point in that day you would end up at his house because the way it sounds to me is that that was kind of like a regular hangout not just for you but for quite a few kids growing up in um bronx river pretty much how it would go the music the parties uh the neighborhood, tough guys, the Zulu Nation, everybody pretty much clinged to Bam because of who he was, because of the Zulu Nation. And everybody that you looked up to was a part of the Zulu Nation. So that was the magnet for Bam. You had the um, the Zulu Nation, the meetings, where we would uh, gather once a week and have the, the you know, the, the, with the universals or whatever the case may be. And pretty much, you know, Bam was a celebrity. Everybody looked up to him, did positive things, said positive things. He had a lot of. But but I'm talking specifically like like you're like you're 12 years old. So like when I think of me being 12 years old, I I, I wake up, you know, I might turn on some cartoons, or might do whatever, and then go outside to play with my me and my friends did Barbie doll dolls and things like that. So I'm really trying to get to a typical day in a child's life where he would be victimized by a predator, not really Bambada. Well, it is Bambada, but you know what I'm saying, like a like. How okay. your, your um, when you were that age, your life at that age, and kids, even though something may be going wrong with them, kids are still happy. Like sometimes you don't know what's going on. So I, I'm really trying to get to how, as a 12 year old, you would end up at that apartment. Like how that would happen through a day or the weekend, or you know what I'm trying to say. You get it. You know what? It's, it's weird because I don't really remember the first time I went to Bam's house. But what I do remember is my mother be sending me to the store and I supposed to come right back from the store and I would always end up at his house. I would take my time. Now, as for his house, if you went, if you left your building to go to the store, his house is, you're passing his house or do you have to go out of your way to his house? Like how, and then no, I, I guess would have to, be I would actually have to pass, going to the store, I would have to, I would walk maybe, let's say, 250 feet to his building and the store is past, you know, past his building. So I had to walk past his building to get to the store. And, you know, Bam House was the fun house. It started off being the fun, it's the hip hop house. Parties, everybody that you looked up to is always there. It was fun. It wasn't always like, it, just, it started off a bad thing. Bam was a hero, a hero, Pardon me. That's okay. Ben was a heroic figure in our community. You know, so to be around him, to do the parties and just hanging out at his house, it was fun. Everybody was there. So, so when you were there, it would be, I, I heard I heard a lot of the discourse and going back and forth. So everybody, especially the black speed, we didn't deal with age back then. So it would be like all ages and is it mostly young men there? Like, were any girls hanging out there at all? I mean, when you go to Bam House, you might see anybody around. I've ran into Queen Latifah in Bronx River, Ice T, Ice Cube, all types of all types of celebrities being with Bam. So you might see anybody in Bam's house. Everybody loved Bam. Okay, so let's talk about when the abuse would happen. And I remember remember the video you did of that kid who was who had like mental mentally not developed or whatever. I'm trying to see if it's like this. I'm trying to oh, see. Oh yes, it probably is. Okay, I was like, I see something. Sweat. You know what I'm trying to get to All right, is, so, um, is is how it would happen and it, and if it was that many people around, are they around when it's happening? That's what I'm trying to understand. Okay. Without trying to put words in your mouth, I'm trying to see what was going on. Okay, I got to I got to get over the um the, the nervousness okay. of the camera. Okay. That's what okay, it is okay. too. All right. So um 
Well, I'll give you one of my first, one of, one of the first situations w with Bam being in his house. It was me and a few of my other own close friends. And we was in the weight room, in the middle room, the, the room next to the bathroom on the seventh floor. There was a weight room in there. And we was lifting weights in the room. And Bam would come into the room and basically say, hey, let me take a picture of you guys. And then, you know, we take a picture, we flexing our muscles, showing our muscles and stuff. So then he gets real creepy with the, um, hey, why don't you take off your shirt? Then we all feeling kind of funny, and he's convincing us to take off our shirt to show our muscles. And, you know, shortly after that, we would leave. Then from there, he starts to putting the porn on, the, the porno on, letting the porno play and telling you that, you know, you're supposed to jerk off. You know, that's how he breaks you in. You're supposed to jerk off. You know, this is what you're supposed to do as a man. Then he pops the picture book open. And now when you when he pops the picture on book open, it's like, whoa. You seeing, I'm not going to call no more names out because I, I, I pretty much... Heard a lot of people doing that, and I promise I wouldn't do it no more. It's inconsiderate because when you look at the picture book, the people in the picture book was actually underage. Now, they're, most of them, you know, that I looked up to may have been 10 years older than me. So you actually see the stair steps, some of them five, some of them 10, some of them, seven, you know, you, you, you get what I'm going as far as the, like the stair steps. So when you look through the book, you're like, whoa. He got this one in the book, he's a killer. He got this one in the book, he's a killer. He got this one, you, you seeing people that you really look up to, and you know, these are warriors, like, wow. Describe what you're seeing in the book. You don't have to name any names, but, so what's so wow about it for the audience who may not have heard what you covered with Star on his show? What's in the book? What's in the book is pretty much him taking photos of these guys with their pants down. Everybody has their pants down or their butt naked in the book. What is the background? Where, where are these people? Can you tell from or remember from these pictures where these pictures were taken? Like behind, what's behind them? Or are they all How, in his apartment? In, a part, in his apartment, in hotel rooms. You can tell from either, either the apartment or the hotel room. So if you and your, you, you had to be, you and your friends would have, by the time you were even born, like they're already in the mix. So by the time you're 12 years old, it's already a huge uh, culture going on around him. You see what I'm saying? Like you weren't, you're not old, old as old as Lord Sharif where he could say, oh, I was there when this started and when that started. When you, when you become 12 years old, it's already a lot of stuff going on. So when you're at the apartment with your friends, and he would start trying to break you all in and grooming you and making you more comfortable, starting with the pictures. Then what would happen? And when you say Bam's house, are you talking about his house at that point, or is this the apartment where he lived with Ahmed? This is the apartment where he lived with Ahmed. And so where would he be when these pictures are being taken? A lot of the times Ahmed would be right, like, this is Ahmed's room, this is Bam's room, just that close. You, you really like, you, you just, this, this, I mean, he's right here, he's right here. Not even three feet away. So Ahmed would be in the next room, even though, you know, me and Ahmed had a talk and he tried to tell me that, you know, most of the time I wasn't there. There's times he wasn't there and there's times he was there. He, I don't care what he said, he knew what was going on. He was never, that. the one thing I will say on his behalf, he was never in the room when any of this was going on. But he was there. You know, another another problem that I really like. I have many problems with this whole thing. Another problem that I have would be how how I'm not sure if you said it, but definitely Savage and then another person were talking about another. Like he would bring another man in the room, and then another man came. So it's like how many people? How many people? You don't have to name names. Do you think was taking part in this? other adults, other people. And when I say adult, I mean 17 and over where they could be charged as an adult. Like adults were participating in this, not just Bambada. How many do you think it was? I can't really give you an actual number, but it was more than enough. 
You see what I'm saying? It's, mm, I would say in New York, Bam had at least about a good 30 brothers that knew exactly what he was doing, that took place in what he was doing. No exaggerating. Maybe more than that. But they also took part in it, too. That was taking part? See, I, I won't say about 30 of them took part with me. I won't, I won't say that. Right. But from what I've seen and being in that house, it was quite enough of them. More than enough. More than enough of them knew what was going on with him. Um, without going, I mean, well, you can go there if, if you wanted to, because I'm trying to see what, what did you go through? If you even remember being so young, what kind of changes did you go through after this experience with him, you know, around the first few, one, two times? Do you remember if you had any changes that your mom may have been able to pick up on or anybody else? Me going through what I went through with Bam, See, what people don't understand is I was already broken in before I got to Bam. I was being molested before Bam even got to me. So it was like I, I couldn't really go talk to my mother about it. I didn't know how to talk to her about it. So I just kept it to myself. And the signs probably was there, the bed wetting, because I, I pretty much was wetting the bed, all types of stuff was going on with me. But um. Going to my mother and actually saying that to her, the first thing you're thinking about is, all right, I'm going to tell my mother that Bam is molesting me and he has an army around him. She, there's nothing. My family claims to be tough and, and they're fighters, but they're no Zulu nation. Nowhere near it. So for me to even go to my mother and say, hey, this is what's going on, it's not, you know, that's not something I was going to do. It's not going to happen. Okay, let's talk about the, the Zulu Nation and as an army and that kind of thing. Now, I'm from Chicago. I'm from the projects. Um, so I'm not I'm not um, I'm not getting it. Like I don't get it. So so you have a you have a person who everybody is you know, I love how everybody's like, Oh, I heard these rumors for for decades. I, I love how everybody is saying it. So you have this person who is rumored to be n not only just a closeted homosexual, but he is actually making uh, outward passes at other young men or whatever. I'm not sure, you know, so far I haven't heard anybody admit to, I've heard rumors of him being a child molester for dec decades. They've only said they've heard rumors of him being gay. So the Zulu, so he would surround himself with these hardcore brothers. So where where did that leave the rest of the people in the projects who are not in the Zulu Nation? So they're just like, I can't understand why nobody uh, put a stop to this. Like, even people in the Zulu, like, he couldn't have been getting paid that much. Like, they couldn't have been eating that fat off of him. Here's the, here's the thing with the Zulu Nation. For one, most of the Zulu Nation, I'm not going to say he got everybody, but he got damn near everybody. Most of the Zulu Nation went through their phases of being molested by Bam. You know, you'll have some dudes talking about, oh, that's a lie. I Well, like I said, if he didn't touch you, he wasn't attracted to him, or he wasn't attracted to you, rather. And there was, there was stories I've heard of people trying to tell on Bam and disappearing. This, this was not the first time somebody said something about Bam. So now, what it is, I'll give you an example. You had um, some brothers that were sitting in a small park in Bronx River, and they was gossiping about Bam being a pedophile. And shortly after that, some Zulus ran up on them, and that had never happened again. Just the, it's the end of the story. Zulu Nation was nothing to play with. You, you might have a tough guy here and there. No, in Zulu Nation, you had some real strong brothers that will hurt you real bad. So when you know you're the average person just running your mouth, you know you're not a Zulu. So pretty much, you know, the, the gossip about, about Bam and talk about what he's doing, when, for one, he's feeding people. He's feeding the right people, but he's pigeon feeding them. And the ones that's feeding themselves like the Mickey Bensons that's rolling, running around with iced tea that used to be, be down with Fat Joe and all the rest of these other artists he's been dealing with, you know, he's eating off of the name. 
So now, if you affect the name, you affect in his pocket. What is he going to do? The same thing he did in the phone conversation with Ron Savage. Shut up, nigga. You knew you liked it. What you mean he liked it? So I hear these people, all a lot of them saying how they all know you. Uh, you came up, you know, they, they make no qualms, but that you like a real G from, from Bronx River, from the Zulu Nation. None of them have called you a liar or, or anything like that. I just I how I just can't under it's not registering in my brain how they all say that this was news to them. You coming forward last year was news to them, and um, and then then I'll move on from from that because there's a few more things I wanted to cover. But I, I just find it hard to believe that people that nobody knew what was going on with you and not just you, but it sounded like it was a, a whole bunch of other kids. How could they all say that I had no idea? Anybody that says that they had no idea what was going on with Bam is a liar. Tafik, supposed to be Bam's cousin, he was molested by Bam. I witnessed it. His younger brother was molested by Bam. I witnessed it. There's another brother that I'm not going to mention his name. I mentioned his name before. It was me, him, and Tafik's brother all in the room like a big orgy with, 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 with um, porno playing on and Bam with Vaseline in his hand trying to jerk all three of us off. You see what I'm saying? So as, as far as people talking about they don't know what happened, Bam had groups. You have, in Bronx River, there's sections. You have, like, the dark side, up the hill, down the hill. Bam had groups of young boys that he was molesting at a time. This group leave, he got this group coming in. You had the group where they used to always, I'm not going to mention their name because I promise I won't mention no more names because people have children now, so I got to be considerate. And at the time, and, they would... And for legal purposes. And <laughs> Don't at, mention it because I would have to beep it out anyway. And at the time, you know, these guys, I mean, you're driving, you're 15, 16 years old, you're driving Bam's truck. You ain't, this, you ain't, you ain't driving this truck for nothing. If you're on show, I mean, if you're doing tours with Bam and you're traveling with him, you're sleeping with him. It ain't no if ands, and buts about it. You're not going into hotel rooms with Bam and he's not trying you. So when people sit up there and say, I remember when I was younger, my, my, my brain was fried. One of the um, brothers in the projects, he was like, you running around with Bam? And he started going into, <laughs> yeah, you know, Bam a faggot, right? That, that was his words. And me at the time, yeah, I was being molested by Bam, but I also told him. So... He ain't never say that again. Bam sent his little soldiers at him. Everybody knew. The adults in the projects would talk, and they would say and whisper, after the fact, this is when I started, because my mother never really let me go outside. She called herself being overprotective, but she really wasn't overprotective. You can't go outside. You sending me to the store, I'm going outside. Oh, you go to the neighbor's house to go play spades, and I'm going to run outside while my uncle probably in the room. I'm running out the house anyway, and I'll slip back in. So you always heard the stories of stay out of that apartment after now. This is when I'm hearing it after. And for me, I'll be honest with you, my mother, dealing with my mother wasn't easy. I had issues at home, too. Not saying my mother was a bad mother. But my father not being there and my mother always being angry, we had issues with each other. So Bam House was sort of like the outlet, but the spanking at the same time. Like I said before, Bam was like the uncle that paid your way to college and molested you at the same time. You'll get molested and go to the amusement park. This, this is what Bam does. A lot of people in Bronx River was going through poverty. You got the dope era and you got the crack era and he took advantage of it. He swooped through, he swooped through like the savior and helped people because one thing I will say about him, you're always here. If, if I call Bam on the phone and I say, yo, I need something, he gonna give it to you. That's the type of person he is. But at the same time, he's that uncle that paid the way to college and molested you at the same time. And you know, some people I ain't going to say her name. Boy, do I want to. You know, they try to say that he was molested himself when he was a kid to justify what he's doing. He was molested by two twin brothers. 
and this is part of the reason why he's going on and he should have compassion or forgiveness being dealt towards him for what he did and what he's doing continuously. See, me dealing with Bam, I would have never told my story. I would have never came forward. The hardest thing in the world for me to do is to do what I've done, to come forward and actually say, because I'm not gay, you know, that a man has actually touched me. I'm not gay. So the, the thought of it, to actually feel a man's whiskers, his mustache tis- tickling your belly while he's performing oral sex on you is something you'll never forget. Even though, in my mind, I kind of blocked out like certain things. Certain things, it came to me after I came forward. I started to remember that my mind blocked it out. And dealing with Bam is like him putting a, a, certain things is coming back to me now. I had a meeting with one of the dudes in the conscious community and he set up a meeting with me with a, 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 a old school rapper, underground rapper. I'm not going to say their name because you don't want me to mention their names. And when I went to meet him, we was talking outside for a while and then he says to me, he was like, so what's up with the, um, the, the password? I'm confused. I'm puzzled in the face. I'm like, what is he talking about? Then he says it. He was like, you know, the, the, the word that Bam had, when, you know, whenever Bam wanted to jerk off, he used to um, ask if you wanted to go upstairs and hit. I said, holy shit. I'm thinking to myself now, if you knew that word, you spoke to somebody that was molested to him. I mean, molested by him. So... Why are you sitting up here asking me questions as if you don't already know? Don't, you had to be molested by Bam to hear him, to know that he said, let's go upstairs and hit. When he says that, that means we're going upstairs, we're going to put the porn on and we're going to jerk off. So when he said that to me, it was just real creepy. It was like I felt the, the earth shake. And I'm like, all right, I got to go around the corner and feed the meter. My car's parked at the meter. We supposed to be sitting at a restaurant now. We never got to the restaurant. We standing on one of the off blocks. So we walk around after an hour standing outside, no own restaurant, no interview. Usually this cat is always rolling his cameras, doing interviews. But you got me and a um, famous rapper there, no interview. So I said, all right, give me some quarters. I almost said his name. Let me go across the street from the Apollo and on um, feed the meters. I walk di- di- diagonally, I mean directly across the street from the Apollo and runs into um, one of the brothers from the Zulu Nation that was being molested by Bam at the same age with a couple of his own um, soldiers scattered out acting like they wasn't together. And he acted like he was just so happened to be standing there. So while I'm going, I'm crossing the street. I'm on the phone with one of my older brothers on the phone And I'm pretty much, he hears me, and he's telling me, he was like, if they standing there, you on 125th Street, he said, don't go and do what you normally would do. Just get in your car and leave. So what I did was, I'm like, I don't want to leave, because I told him, don't go nowhere. I'll be right back. I'm going to feed the meter. He was like, all right, I'll be right here waiting for you. So he convinced me. He was like, listen, even if they call the police on you, I already know how you are. Just get out of there, because if you go to jail, you, 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 you pretty much defeated yourself. So I got in the car and I left that facility and went to um, one of the um, blocks in the Bronx and called them on the phone, called the dude on the phone. It was like, yo, now we can come meet up in the Bronx and we can deal with the situation. He hung up the phone. I called the guy that, set, um, that pretty much tried to set me up with the interview because this is how I'm feeling either the, 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 the um, conscious community cat tried to set me up or it was the rapper. Now, both of them had dealings with Bam. And, um, you know, pretty much he played stupid. He was like, I was threatening him. I'm like, when I catch you, I'm going to kill you. And he was pretty much like, you know, um, yo, I didn't do it. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't see him nowhere around. Like, yeah, right. You knew he was there. It's not coincidental that he know I'm going to be there at this time and I'm, I'm there with y'all. You know, but back to what I'm saying. So this rapper, the rapper dude, he ends up doing an interview with the other conscious dude Right before there was an event that I did with Brother Irritated Genie and Tazariak dealing with child molestation. So 
a day before he drops an interview with this rapper cat and the rapper cat is pretty much talking around about for like 45 minutes and then like 45 minutes into it he say well if bam may have done this then he's wrong and he need to be corrected like dogs first and foremost you've been in depth with people who dealt with this topic with bam that told you he did this they gave you the password that he used he, we going upstairs to hit now you playing dumb Whoever you spoke to before you got to me was a reliable source. But nobody's getting in his ass. But when I did deal with them, now, ever since then, you don't see nobody touching up on this topic no more. It's just real quiet. You know, and Star, he passed them, like, he gave them a, a bucket of fruit in a basket, like, here, handle your business. They had everything that they needed to go with. And um, you set up press conference, we gonna do this, we gonna do that. You got brothers all over their own YouTube shows. He's gonna be held accountable to get the views and the ratings and then drop the ball. Now Bam's running around in the community and I give you an example. Just recently, he's at a, um, a, a funeral and at the funeral, you got the Zulu warriors protecting him. And my thing is, they know because that one of the heads of the, the Zulu warriors is Muhammad. He was there when Bam admitted that he molested me. He was there in the hospital when Bam got stabbed for touching a young boy. And, you know, they're trying to play with the age of the boy regardless of what. Let's say, the, let's say he was 20 years old. He's still a baby to Bam. What are you doing? You see what I'm saying? So now my question to them and what I personally had to say, well, now that my mother know and other parents know, because behind the scenes people are talking, they're finding out. And I had people asking me, well, damn, did he touch my husband? Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. That one, yeah, he did. All up in my inboxes. So now you have Bam at this funeral and the Zulu warriors is standing guard around him at this funeral. My question is, if my mother rolls up to him with a shotgun in a wheelchair, what are y'all going to do? Are you gonna hurt my mother? If a father comes out on behalf of his child, maybe that young boy that stabbed Bam and said, now nah, I'm gonna finish this, you, you date raped my child. What is the Zulu warriors gonna do? Why y'all standing there defending him? You know he's guilty. I wanna go back to um, you as a kid. I'm trying, I'm trying to see the, the psychology that he used. So you're a kid, meaning like 12, 13, and th these things start to happen. How, do, how does he, um, how do you become whatever role and what role did you play in the Zulu Nation? Like how, then, then how did you become, I don't know, I picture like an enforcer of whatever, you know, like wait for the Zulu mm. Nation. Because I'm trying to get to the part, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about you going to prison and how it stopped then, of course, you're not there anymore, and then when you come home, and then I want to, there's some other things that I want to get to, just like facts, all the way up to this meeting that took place with the council. So let's talk about when you were, so 12, 13, it starts, and now what age do you start becoming like a soldier for them? Well, um, Without incriminating any you yeah, or yourself, of course. yeah, nothing like that, you know. Well, me being um, what I can remember about Bam is that, like I said, he breaks you in, he shows you the book on some old, you know, this is normal. This is normal. This is what everybody. Did. First of all, you got to understand something. Bam is a big guy. He's intimidating. So automatically, it's like, it's, it's, it's already uncomfortable. Especially when you, my size, I was like probably about 70 pounds, 60, 70 pounds at the time. So for, for with, with him, you're intimidating. You use the fact that people look up to you. I don't even know what was on my mind outside of the fact that I was broken in. I do know most of the people in my community their minds was, the, the children was fragile. Your father's on dope, your mother's on crack. What do you expect from him? It was an easy setting for him to just run amok and do what he did. 
it was the perfect place. This is why you have a man that's legendary status not pick up and leave the projects. You're not going in the suburbs and having your way with these children like that because it's a little bit, they're not under the same stressful conditions as being in the projects. Your mother's an alcoholic, your father's on crack, your, 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 um, your mother's on dope, whatever the case may be. The abuse, the mental abuse, the, 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 the stuff that trickled down from slavery. A lot of this trickled down from slavery, from what I understand and what I see. So Bam would take advantage of all of the elements, the hip hop, the music, the parties, the people that you looked up, the meetings. I mean, don't get me wrong. He had classes where he taught lessons, where you would actually learn. You would open up in these classes, you would pray, you know, and, and, and stuff like that. If you was Christian, you have a Christian prayer. If you was Muslim, you have a Muslim prayer. That's why I got my first introduction to Islam before I went to jail, because I became Muslim in jail. At these meetings, listening to the brothers pray in Arabic, it caught my attention. You know, at the time, my mother be trying to have Bible class with me and make me sit down, me and my own brother that's locked up right now. And the Zulu Nation was a getaway. In some cases, the Zulu Nation was the best thing that happened to me. The bad part of the Zulu Nation that happened to me was Bambada. There's many of brothers in the Zulu Nation that that's not, they died for whatever reason, got killed or whatever, or just not here no more, that were good brothers. Everybody in the Zulu Nation was not bad. Okay, so, so then, so what age do you go away, do you go to prison? What age? 18. 18. So what are you doing between the 13 to 18? Year old. You're attending these classes. He's teaching these classes, and are these classes coming from like Dr. York and the Nation of Islam teachings, or what is he teaching? A lot of the lessons that I, I know now came from Dr. York. It came not just Dr. York, but the Five Percent Nation, which was cool. You know, they had some good lessons, or whatever the case may be. And Dr. York and other places he would look. Ben was a knowledgeable, a knowledgeable brother. He read, he studied, he passed on knowledge. He was just like the pastor, the rabbi, you know, the Catholic church priest. They give you that sermon, that teaching, and then after that, wherever he catch you at, you just doomed when everybody's gone. 